Coming up in this edition of Junior Sabres Journal, the Red Wings fly into town as Buffalo concludes its season opening homestand. The Hamilton Red Wings rolled into Amherst on Tuesday, September 20th, one night after a big win on their home ice against the Milton Icehawks. Their leading scorer, Andrew Rajenovic, with four goals and seven assists in his first four games. Buffalo, meanwhile, came off an exciting 6-5 win Sunday at home against Burlington, but had the advantage of a night's rest. Hamilton opened the scoring at the 4:18 mark of the first period when Adam Brady put the puck past Parker Gahagan. Buffalo responded quickly, however, as Andrew Podorowski put the puck past Wings goalie Stormer Santana just two minutes later. Then the Junior Sabres got a power play opportunity, and Dylan Howitt cashed in to lift Buffalo to a 2-1 lead. The Junior Sabres were mistake-prone in their own zone at times, and Hamilton's Regenovic took advantage of these miscues to tie the game at 2-2. With just under seven minutes remaining and a Hamilton penalty pending, Rocky Gridadaria stole a loose puck and scored to put Buffalo back in the lead. About two minutes later on a power play, David Seward tipped Chris Luker's shot past Santana, helping the junior Sabres build a 4-2 lead and take it into the first intermission. Always tough against Buffalo, the Hamilton Red Wings chipped away at the Junior Sabres lead in the second period. Parker Gahagan gloved Benjamin Walsh's shot, but the rebound went off Chris Luker's body and into the Buffalo net. The score was now 4-3, but Buffalo once again responded. Podorowski utilized his speed, saw an opportunity, went around the Hamilton net and put in his second goal of the game, lifting the Junior Sabres ahead 5-3. In the second period, it was Buffalo's turn to get into penalty trouble, and they found themselves down two men at one point of the period. They successfully killed off the penalties, but with less than a minute in the period, the Red Wings caught Buffalo's defense off its guard and sent in Walsh for his second goal of the game. At the end of two, it was Buffalo 5, Hamilton 4. Three penalties were called in the third period, but neither team could take advantage. Hamilton turned up the pressure on their hosts this period. Santana was pulled from the Hamilton net for an extra attacker late, but the Junior Sabres could not find the empty net. And they paid for it with just 15 seconds left, as Regenovic found the puck in a scramble in front of the Buffalo net and tied the game at 5-5. The next stop for this game, overtime, which once again went in Buffalo's favor. David Seward passed the puck up to Josh Keelick, who fired the puck on net and passed Stormer Santana. The Junior Sabres finished their homestand with a 6-5 overtime win, capturing six out of a possible eight points to start their season. After the game, head coach Grant Ledyard discussed the game that nearly got away from Buffalo. It, it, again, it's another one of those games that you kind of shake your head. And, and if uh, we had a little bit more experience and a couple more guys that wanted to shut things down, um, you know, it could have been a, a diff much different 6-1 you know, 7-1 type of game. But we're, we're really not quite ready or willing to make a simple play, and, and, but uh, I can't teach uh, even that much in practice. They learned more in this game tonight than I could have had in two practices in a row. So um, they learned a lot. Uh, I think a lot of them shook their heads after and you know, wonder what happened, you know, to give up uh, some goals and be 5-5. But um, the Hamilton team looked a little bit dead in the water. And uh, we let him back in it. But we won the game. Uh, Josh Kiewicz had a wonderful goal in overtime. We're always squeaking him out. You know, sometimes uh, we have some uh, breakdowns in the D zone, but we always uh, we try to bring uh, those to a minimum and create some offense. When Hamilton scored that late goal in the, in the second period, it kind of caught Buffalo off guard a little bit. Um, what, was, what was being said in the locker room to get you guys uh, to stay focused for the third? Oh, well, yeah, we were kind of kind of down on ourselves because we uh, let them score so late, but then we knew that we had the game uh, going our way. We just had to keep rolling, keep uh, fortunate hard, and keep the possession in their zone because when we had it down in their zone, they really couldn't play with us at all. Next up for the Buffalo Junior Sabres, it's their first road game of the season at Oakville. Um, they're a model franchise. People try and you know, emulate them, and, and we're no different. Uh, they're the leader. They've been, you know, at the top or uh, winning our league for the last couple of years, three, four years. And uh, but we've given them fits in the past. So I'd like to go in there and play a simple game, hard, uh, you know, simple on the puck, and, and, and just push them in areas that they don't like to be pushed. If you can't make the drive to Oakville, you can watch the game live online with OJHL Live, powered by New Lion. 
You can find the link to OJHL Live at our website, buffalojuniorsabers.com. The Junior Sabres' next home game is Monday night, September 26th, against the Aurora Tigers, beginning at 7.30 p.m. If you can't make it, watch it with OJHL Live. Rick Sealing has all the play-by-play -play action. That's it for this edition of Junior Sabres Journal. We'll see you next time.